The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. You're listening to the Sports Scramble Podcast, where four friends serve up a weekly plate of sports with a side of SEC bias. Now, here are your hosts, Chet, Jacob, Wade, and Tyler. Let's go! What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of the year, 2023, of the Sports Scramble Podcast, brought to you by Belly Up Sports. I'm your host, Chet, and as you saw when I, they played the intro, if you're watching on YouTube, I, I had the names lined up perfectly with how they said it in the intro. So Nice. <laughs> you know, I've been practicing and only took 38 shows to get it down, but I've gotten it now. So we started off 2023 with a bang. How are y'all doing? Doing pretty good. How are y'all? Happy New Year, 2023. Happy New Year. We've been doing this for six months now, uh, but two calendar years. So, Yeah, last time I talked to y'all was a whole year ago. Isn't that crazy? I know. It's been a year since we did a show. (laughs) Yeah, I can't believe people are still listening to us. I'll be quiet. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it's the only time you can make those jokes. There was I was in the Uber last night heading home from dinner, and... uh, we passed by a Whataburger and there was a line like wrapped around the building and the driver goes, man, those people are going to get their food till next year. And uh, I just busted better out. Better give them a tip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to, I had to. So, but uh, y'all have a good new year. Shoot off any fireworks. Fletch, you look like a firework guy. No, no. I had to call the cops. <laughs> you had to call I the had, cops last night. Yeah. I had some kids shooting some fireworks at people's houses and, vehicles so uh okay. chasing each other with roman candles in, in people's yards so yeah Can't i was just trying that. to go to uh, lauren and i were just trying to go to dinner last night and uh, uh tell me you graduated college a week ago and all grown up yeah <laughs> call the cops on man. new year's uh, yep it was it was a bit uh chaotic just trying to make an 8 45 reservation and i'm yelling at a bunch of kids out in front of the house at, get uh, off my lawn at 8 30 yeah basically yeah, really <laughs> <laughs> well, I just didn't want to come back car? to it. I just didn't want to come back to a house that wasn't standing. So, yeah, I mean, my week was busy. I moved. Now I'm out here in small town Texas, and we were had some friends over. We were celebrating New Year's, and the neighbor across the street shooting off fireworks in the street. Well, my buddy goes, "Hey, my car is right there." And he gets out there. He's got like some ash marks on his car from the fireworks going off. I was like, you might want to move your car before he reloads with like the ulti- ultimate cannon or something that's going off. So, Tyler, did you shoot any fireworks off in, you, in your neighborhood? Uh, no, but there actually was a lot of fireworks going off. So I decided to just check it out, just go get a seat out there. I usually do shoot off fireworks every year, but I just figured with the, the college football playoff going on, I was just going to sit home and you know not leave my recliner. For eight hours and just watch those two games. I didn't pop off any fireworks. Yeah, those the those definitely a good way to spend New Year's Eve and in 2022 off with a bang. Um, we'll get to those a little later in the show. But what I want to get into is our favorite sports moments of 2022. And we asked this on Twitter, so we, we got a few responses. I'm going to read some. My favorite one that I got was uh, from Jason. Says his eight year old son. Scored his first goal in a tournament game. So congratulations to the little eight-year-old man. You keep keep going. You're gonna be like the next tweet that we got of Messi kissing the World Cup trophy. So uh, a lot of people love that. Um, Teresa loves all of Jimmy G games. Um, he was in a role and his men behind him. Let's go, Brock. Show them we are the best. I think I know her pick to win the Super Bowl. Um, <laughs> Let's see. We had uh, someone just loved the Chargers. Just their whole season was the favorite memory of the of the year. Uh, we got some Albert Pujols hitting home run number seven hundred. Uh, a and... conspiracy? I don't know, Wade. Was no, it a conspiracy? He, <laughs> he, he overachieved. <laughs> Bring that back from twenty twenty two. He overachiever. Proved me wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the last one I'll read. Uh, Derwin James body slamming Travis Kelsey into the ground. Somebody, uh, the what Bolts about Derwin F- James ripping or... someone's head off and leaving it in 2022? <laughs> Last week, I lost. I lost you there for a second. What was that, Wade? 
Oh, I said, what about Derwin James leaving that poor receiver's head in 2022, like a week yeah. ago when he yeah. just he knocked absolutely him annihilated the Colts guy? <laughs> uh, what's his name today? Uh, DJ Moore got absolutely murdered at the fifth line. Uh, so I was watching the, them trying to mount a comeback, and it, they just he he 45 yard pass. I was like, he gets away from this guy. It, they score, they win the game, and he just got absolutely like his head taken off. So, uh, but wait, favorite sports moment of 2022? What do you got? Uh, probably cliche, but LSU beating Alabama and then Ole Miss just two weeks prior. That was a fun little stretch there, getting to go on the field twice for some LSU fans. So that, that was a good moment, uh, for sure. But I'm probably missing something more obvious, but, um, not quite as good as the 2021 moment, which was the Braves winning the World Series, but it was a good year of sports overall. There you go. Jacob, what, what do you got? What was your favorite moment <clears throat> sports in 2022? My all time, sport- all year. Well, my favorite sports moment that happened all year happened the last minute of 2022. <laughs> um, it, at 11.59 p.m., Timed uh, perfectly. Really got it in there. Timed perfectly. <laughs> got it in there. Um, Ohio State's lovely kicker decided to shank a 50-yard field goal. And that was probably the best moment all year, to be honest with you. Dude, uh, that looked like I, me whipping out the 56-degree, uh, <laughs> like <laughs> 10 feet from the green, air mailing it to the left. So four left over there. I'm like, geez. I'm, yeah, that was I, pretty bad. I thought it was tipped, and then I've watched it about a hundred times. Nobody tips it. I don't. He I just don't overdid just it. Like, yeah, Georgia I mean, got in the it. backfield pretty quick. I mean, he had to rush it, but I think yeah. the pressure just got to him. Yeah, poor I guy. I think the thing poor about guy. it was was like the kicker himself was chill about the fact that he missed it. Like he wasn't breaking down right there. It was the placeholder. The man was mm-hmm. like in the ground, just like devastated. And that's when I thought I was like, well, maybe it was a bad hold. Yeah, yeah I thought he messed after, up at first. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, after I watched, I'm thinking, it really wasn't that bad of a hold. I'm thinking, the kicker just shanked it. I was like, there's plain and simple. Yeah. He's got something. He had money on Georgia to win it. So, you know, yeah, he probably just made a couple, a couple grand. He put his life savings on it. He's like, it all is going to come down to me. Um, Tyler, I saw you replied to the tweet. It was your favorite moment was the LSU upset. You got a second one since Wade took yours? No, uh, it's one through ten. Double up. <laughs> what yeah, yeah, we, we can double up i mean i'm a lifelong lsu fan i'm gonna remember that game for as long as i can probably till next season at least i mean it's just the way that lsu won that game with the two-point conversion never forget that day yeah no that that one was close uh for me uh but since i just, i knew that one of y'all would have it i had to go into the golf world with scotty Three putting on 18 to win the Masters. That was my favorite moment because it was because just one it was of those. the only sports bet he won all year. Exactly. It's the only one I, yeah. So that should show that I shouldn't bet on sports. Can we do the I worst know. one too? I don't have one queued up. But what's your, I do. What's, what's your, Kentucky worst ruining my bracket again. Oh, in March Madness. <laughs> that was a while back. Can't Come wait on. to do it again in two months. I guess my worst one would be not starting TJ Hawkinson last week in fantasy football. That's mine. Or just or my Tyler, whole fantasy football season. Tyler, it could be uh, you and I's $1,000 uh, bet that Miami decided to beat Iowa State by a million. Uh, we should have just left that game out the door. We got too greedy picking the clothes. Yeah. It's always that extra parlay, that, that extra leg to the we parlay that knocks it much. out. Yep. Wait, what do you got uh, for a worst, worst, worst moment. moment? I'll keep it in the betting world. Probably having – the best odds in the world on Tennessee baseball to win at all. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and starting in January when I placed the bet and they were number one every single week of the season until they choked in the final, like Omaha round or whatever. And mm. um, did they even get to Omaha? I don't even remember. No, Notre Dame knocked get... them out in the super. Yeah. Yeah. So they didn't even make it to Omaha. And I had like 3,500 to one odds on that. Mm. And... Here's, here's an idea, guys. Here's an idea for 2023. You know, with college basketball, at least in one of the regions, you either need to pick a 15 or a 16 seed to make it to this to the Elite Eight because it happens every single year. So we'll pick like, our team and we'll ride with them. 
that's where like right, that's we need where to start watching some right. film on these small schools then yeah start start picking them out start um, writing, taking down some notes yeah because i cannot do peter's, this again if saint peter's is in the tournament i am totally picking them to make it to the but their team all, all right, transferred and then yeah, one yeah. of their guys <laughs> old doug almost head. knocked somebody out in one game <laughs> Eight foot tall dude. <laughs> yeah, that is one of my New Year's resolutions. Is hopefully that my national champion will at least survive like one day of the tournament. That way, I can actually enjoy it and not, you know, pull my hair out the first day. I'm gonna be yeah. on a cruise ship for the second round, so oh. uh, I'll get to see my first round picks, and then from there, it doesn't matter. Watch, yeah. Wade's gonna put a bet down. It's gonna win the whole thing. And come back from the cruise. And gonna, <laughs> it's gonna, gonna, gonna come back a millionaire. And be like, wow. I guess they will have a sports bar in there. I'll be able to see a little bit, but it'll be stress free. That'll be the yeah. least of your worries during that time. Wade, that's right. Wade exactly. gets back to the mainland and sees how much money you want, and he's like, "Oh my god, get back on the boat, baby! Goes, get he's back on the boat! I'm gonna claim, it. I'm gonna claim yeah. it in open water. So it's tax days. There you go. Now you're beating the system. Now you're beating the system. Yeah. Um. I got a question for y'all. We had, you know, bowl season's been great this year, uh, especially the college football playoffs. We had the um, the the Duke's Mayo Bowl with Maryland and NC State. Um, I didn't realize too his younger brother wasn't the quarterback for Maryland anymore. I thought he was still out there, but it was somebody else. Um, Maryland gets he the win. Out there. Was he? Yeah, I only watched because like the guy they. Because the guy they started ended up getting hurt. Tua wasn't, or Tua's younger, Talia wasn't supposed to play. Yeah. Oh, was he sitting the game out? No, he's he the backup. Backup. Oh, he got. He was the backup taken. for the game. He was the starter all season long, but he was coming off an injury. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. Uh, he's the new I, Jimmy Garoppolo. I was he, watching. I was watching like a little bit of it at the beginning, and I was like, "Where's Talia?" Um. But Maryland gets the dub, and then afterwards they pour the mayo on their coach's head. Uh, oh, and the broadcaster was suspended indefinitely, according to this. Uh, oh, jeez. <laughs> the comments he made. Suspended indefinitely for comments during Duke's Mayo Bowl. Um, he made a comment about all the illegal aliens down in El Paso <laughs> while checking in on the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas. <laughs> Oh my god. The announcer <laughs> on live TV. Yes, the announcer. Oh my. Oh, he said he said in the Sun Bowl and amongst all the illegal aliens <laughs> down in El Paso, it's UCLA 14 and Pittsburgh 6. Oh my yeah. god. Uh, he wants to there. leave that one so, in 2022. Uh, Jeez. Yeah. Yikes. Uh yeah, it's it's NC State's an uh broadcaster like their radio broadcaster, huh? Oh, okay. Yeah, they suspended. Yeah, they I was thinking it was like answer. RG three because he ESPN. said something pretty insensitive the other day. <laughs> RG three just lets it fly. Speaking of RG three, his wife went into labor last night during the uh, playoff game, and he just like bolted off the yeah. field. It was great. They had the camera. Hey, that's that's the good. fastest. Uh, what, that is the fastest I've ever seen that man run. Even during his playing, game. I know the irony is he caught yeah. a Southwest flight back to Dallas or wherever his wife was having the kid, and he's like the only person in the world that caught a Southwest flight this week. Everyone else has been screwed over by them. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that Southwest uh, sale. You know the, I'm sorry, the all the flights got canceled. Here's a round trip for twenty dollars to mm-hmm. wherever you want to go. So well, I'm waiting for that to come out. Not banking on that. Uh, but so what I was getting at with the Mayo Bowl, of course, the winner gets the Mayo dumped on them. It really should be the losing coach. Uh, last year was South Carolina's Wade. His name escapes me. You know it. Shane you Beamer. Enjoy. Shane Beamer did the Mayo. How much would it take, or what would have to be given to you to get Mayo like that dumped on your head? Because I hate mayonnaise. I don't eat it on a sandwich. I'll eat it like on a hamburger if it's on there already. But I'm not a mayo fan. So I actually came around on mayo in 2022. I used to not have it on BLTs or any sandwiches, but this year I just gave up on it. So you'll get the, the bucket of mayo dumped on your head for free, is what I'm hearing. We'll do we'll it for a BLT. Your, yeah, at your wedding, I'll give you a BLT and then I'll dump some mayo on it. <laughs> Maybe the bachelor trip, you can mayo me. <laughs> there we go. But what would it take for you to get a five gallon bucket of mayo poured on your head? 
Well, <clears throat> for a five gallon to get poured on my head, um, I'd probably do it for a hundred bucks. But that's think, it. Yeah, just a hundred bucks. I, Fudge, I would you care. jump in a uh, bush of roses tomorrow on live stream if Penn State wins the Rose Bowl? <laughs> no, no, I will not do that. Would uh, you? I, I will not eat bleed out for Penn State. I'm sorry. <laughs> would, you, <laughs> would you eat a rose if they win the Rose Bowl tomorrow? <laughs> no, no, I would not do that either, Joe. Oh, I would not um, eat green eggs and ham. <laughs> yeah, this is turning into green eggs and ham. Um, <laughs> but I think my problem with it was Mike mm-hmm. Loxley he put this giant hat on and I'm thinking, dude, you are bald. Just embrace it. Just let him pour the, yeah. the mail all over your bald, shiny head. You know, that's, the that's worst part is getting it out of your hair, but if he's got no, yeah, hair, he got no hair, so yeah. he got no hair, <laughs> make it easy. Tyler, how much would you have to be given or what would you have to be given to get Mayo dumped on you? 5,000. I hate Mayo. 5,000. Five so we got, we got a BLT sandwich. We got a hundred dollars and we got five grand. Might Wait, as well set would... my price high for it and just a yeah. bucket of mayo. Tyler said right. down payment. <laughs> yeah, down payment, on, down payment on that mayo. <laughs> oh, wait. I want you to mark this timestamp at 18 minutes. Duke's Mayo Bowl. If y'all are listening, I will get a truckload of mayo dumped on me for some sports scramble media passes next year. Let us cover oh the bowl game. Oh. Give us full access to the teams. I will stand under a truck full of mayo. already had that opportunity, though. What you mean? Tyler will eat a hot dog dipped in mayonnaise every 15 seconds during the game. <laughs> For every score, Tyler will drink a cup of mayo. Oh sure. My gosh. What? <laughs> oh, sure. For media oh, passes, awful. I'll do that, honestly. That's awful. Uh, no, I'm that's not just torture. talking like, like passes like we had to the South Alabama game, which we were thankful for, or, you know, that Fudge covered. I'm talking like full – Pair like fully access to the teams. Like I'm, do- we're doing interviews with ESPN. Okay, that's there. gonna take a whole. <laughs> I, I want, re- yeah, for I... a dump truck of mayo to be dumped on me. That's what you I'm might gonna... get lucky enough to get on the field. Okay, I, field. I'd rather passes. eat a rose with thorns and all. I rather no. Nope, I rather just just eat the rose. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. I- I'll step it back then. Duke's Mayo Bowl. If you're listening, I'll get. I'll do the mayo dump for field passes to the game next year. <laughs> Okay, so go ahead and clip that one. We'll send it to him. Hopefully, you can get your like. Southwest flight there. Yeah, you really. Watch. It'll be like it'll be like Robert Morris versus Austin Pay or something. Hey, doesn't <laughs> matter. It's 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 uh, field passes <laughs> to a bowl game. So, um, speaking of some other bowl games, uh, first we've got to give a shout out to our sponsors over at Yeti. Um, if you, sp- I don't know if they're still doing this promo, but we're gonna run with it. I think they still are with the New Year's season. You spend two hundred dollars anywhere site wide, which is basically buying a cooler. You'll get a free fourteen ounce cup, um, and those suckers will keep your drinks cold forever. I during my move, I had a Yeti ice chest full. We had to move the fridge, so I put everything in the freezer. Moved, got here the next day, still frozen. So, like Futch says, they float around the Pacific Ocean and they wash up on land. Not a problem. So. Head on over to Yeti, use our link, help us out, and uh, get you a new cooler to start off 2023 right. All right. College football playoff. Yesterday might have been the best playoff games we've ever seen with TCU beating Michigan by a score and then Ohio State choking away. They're, what, they were up by like 12, 15 points in the fourth quarter, 14 maybe. They were the first. Uh, Georgia was the first team to ever come back down 14 in the uh it was a weird stat it only happened like 19 times and they were they were one in 19 or something georgia was the first team to ever come back down 14 to win a bowl game i think is what the the stat was um but tyler what did you see on the field you think tcu gets it done against georgia or do the dogs just roll on um well going to the games i mean i agree with you this was definitely the best college football playoff semifinals game i mean combine the games and those are seven point differences i mean the past couple of years like i mentioned on the previous shows like usually we've had one blowout and then one close game so it was definitely satisfying especially with all the playoff expansion uh happening uh in the next upcoming years in 2024 that the top four teams i think they got it right uh tcu and michigan tcu was not afraid in this one they were not scared they put up you know, they got out to a big lead. Uh, Michigan, it was really this two different 
you know, it was two different games, but it was two different outcomes. I mean, both teams got out to a hot start. Ohio State and TCU got out to a hot start. Michigan and Georgia, you just knew that they weren't going to go down without a fight. I mean, TCU, though, they really controlled the majority of that game. I mean, J.J. McCarthy did his best in that game. I mean, TCU's defense, you got to give credit to them. I mean, Donovan Edwards, I mean, had that big run. But after that, how many big runs did he have after that? Not much. So Mm -hmm. you got to give it to TCU's defense. I think that they're going to match up uh, very well against Georgia. They just got to lock down on the tight ends because I think Ohio State's defense, you know, we didn't see Brock Bowers really make a big play until that fourth quarter drive uh, to really get them up. And then he's got to feel it for their kicker and no ruggles. I think that the really the pressure got to him. He was just trying to overkick it. It was a long field goal. Uh, they You would have liked them to get it closer, but they just couldn't really get it you know, the clock and like, yeah, like he's saying, like the clock management by Jim Harbaugh. I mean, what was he thinking of? Like, why I was shaved screaming at the TV, outs? screaming I mean, at it. It was two minutes really shaved off of the clock on offense and three minutes on the offensive side because you're dilly dallying. You're looking over the sideline pretty much like, what do we call him, coach? What do we call him, coach? But you got to yeah. give credit to TCU. I mean, they've been a team of destiny and you just got to root for him. So, I'll hold off to make my pick, but, uh, you know, when we get to the national championship, uh, and, you know, talk in a couple of minutes, uh, but I'll let the other guys uh, give the floor. I was – they it cracked me up because I cut – I think it was Jim Harbaugh's dad in the stands. Yeah, he's like, what and are you doing, like, son? Call a timeout. He's screaming at his son. Everybody's screaming, call a timeout. He's just like, let's see what they do here. Let's see what – can they score? Can they do it? Can they, can they score? And I was just like, dude. You've got three timeouts. You can't I mean, take them to twenty. He did have like you. fifty-nine minutes left, uh, but you just can't. You know, he bobbled the snap once again. I mean, that's just been the Michigan problem. You go back, uh, and Sean McDonough was the announcer too. If you remember the Michigan Michigan State game where he had that legendary call, and now this call. I mean, it was just an insane game. Like these were two insane yeah. games. I mean, we had the three overtime game of Kansas and Arkansas that I thought were going to be the game of the year, the Bulls. Mm-hmm. But these two were the bowl games of the year. So yeah, there's still more to go. So I'm excited for it. Don't worry, Neil. We weren't going to skip over it. I saw his comment. We were just hitting the <laughs> hitting the college football playoff yeah. games first. That Arkansas Kansas game, real quick. The uh, you're down. It's triple overtime. Arkansas converts to their two point. All you got to do is get in the end zone from the two yard line and you run a double reverse pass with the running back or the wide receiver. Like, what are you? Or was he the backup quarterback that they brought yeah, in? Yeah, it was the, the guy who filled in for Jalen Daniels when he Mr. Yeah. Bean. got hurt. Bean. Yeah. Yeah. He has a tight wide open. <laughs> he overthrew him by like 10 yards. Like, so that guy was double do? covered. He had yeah. the guy underneath was wide open. Yeah. So that I was, thought that game uh, was over when I looked. It was 31 to seven. I was like, okay, this is going to be Arkansas blowout. And then Jalen Daniels, you know, we had some preseason hype on him over there at Coast to mm-hmm. Coast. He had five touchdowns. I mean, like you mentioned, they had that targeting penalty uh, that really kept Kansas uh, in another overtime and then the two point conversion. Uh, KJ Jefferson ran it in uh, for, for a two yard touchdown. And then Kansas, you know, Mr. Bean, had, like I call him, uh, didn't get in. So, yeah, that was a yeah. great game in the Liberty Bowl as well. I also don't understand why with the game on the line, you're doing a reverse to your backup quarterback. Just yeah. let, you're on the two-yard line. You could talk Just, about the reverse play call in that TCU-Michigan game on that first drive, too. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to bring up. That was just wild. I mean, just – just run it in. Run it down their throats. That's how you've yeah. been beating most of these Big Ten teams. Yeah. But I mean, guys, the Big Ten, they got exposed. I mean, Ohio State played better than Michigan did. Yeah. But, guys, like, understand this. Coming from the Kansas side of things, I mean, think about Kansas all season long. I mean, they really just went for it. I mean, if they had an opportunity and it was the end of the game, they were not settling to go to overtime for much of anything. I mean, the only reason the game went to overtime was because of Arkansas. And I think that, you know, if it was the other way around and Kansas was in that situation, Kansas, I think, goes for two just to win the game. I I don't – it's one of those things where Kansas is like, what do we have to lose at this point? Yeah, it's a bowl game, you know. Yeah, it's a bowl game. You don't have a game after. Yeah, Yeah, just go for the win. Who cares? Just make it eventful and see if you can get a win. And if you don't, whatever. I mean, it's different than the regular season because, you know, at the regular season you're playing for a chance to win a national championship. Mm-hmm. Or, or Big Ten or, you know, Big 12 championship. And it's just, I mean, 
at that point, there's no point in in settling for three overtimes unless you just want the fans to sit there and warm a chair for longer. But I think uh, I think Kansas handled it well. I think the best game of them all was uh, Notre Dame and South Carolina. I yeah, really that's enjoyed what I was going to get game. to next. Yeah, that was a fantastic football game. Uh, back and forth, offense, defense, both played well. Uh, just really came down to one last drive, and Notre Dame executed on defense, I think. That was uh, that kind of raises a question that I asked Wade and Tyler on. If your defense gets a pick six, do you think it should be treated like a safety where they get the ball back? Like the, all, the, you're the team that no. intercepts it gets the ball mm-hmm. back? Because no. well the reason so. the reason I say it is because they pick off Notre Dame, run it back, tie ball game. Great. Well now Notre Dame gets the ball and basically there was only like a minute left and they could have drove down the field and I you know scored and been done. Um South Carolina has no shot. So I don't know. I was thinking it'd just be like an interesting way that because it the defense scores on a safety, their team gets the ball back. It's like a reward for them. Um so just a thought. That was that might be something interesting to, to see. There'd be pros with. and cons to that situation, yeah. Yeah, but like I mean, that would never happen. I don't think that rule <laughs> would ever be in place. Yeah, I don't think they're changing the rules of uh, football anytime soon, no. based on what we say. Yeah, it's just my thing. It my it's just my thing where it's like, I get if you know the rules of the safety right now. If you were to change that for a pick six, I think it's kind of weird because. I mean, you would change the pick six to a pick two, basically, and yeah. then you're given the ball back. It just seems like a situation where it's almost like a a win win for the team, and you're giving that team a chance to basically have two two scoring opportunities back to back. It's different from a safety because I think you know it's so difficult to see guys get backed up into their own, you know. End zone. I mean, in that case, I mean, if you can't get out of your end zone, a pick six. I mean, pick six can just happen off of a tip pass. I mean, that's what we saw right. in a lot of these games were tip passes that just got taken back. I mean, that's the thing about it. I don't think he can penalize because sometimes it just isn't the quarterback's fault uh, in that situation. You can't really. Yeah, I guess if much. they if they keep possession, you'd have to change it to like two points. You know, I would be more in favor of upping a safety to a seven to a six point play. I mean. If the goal is to get it in the other end zone and not to allow points in your end zone, why should be why should a safety where you're getting literally tackled in your own end zone or fumbling it out your own end zone only be worth two points? I mean, well, because I say, of this, I, th- well, I, think it's be- yeah. I think it's because of this. Let's say you punt the ball down there and they pin you deep. I mean, are you really going to give the team six points because their punter pinched you at the two yard line and you can't get it out? I mean, that's one of those situations where true. <laughs> You give yeah. the team six points because yeah. the punter basically had the hey, kick punters would be more relevant. Yeah. Hey, the uh, <laughs> the Tampa Bay Buccaneers punter today won the won them the game. I think <laughs> sure did. That. I'll, uh, we'll get to that when we get to our dog dog of the week. Uh, no, but you can't leave from that game. You got to talk. Well, the South Carolina and Notre Dame game. Yeah, because, let's get back to that. One. Uh, yeah, because yeah, we're going I from mean, like the college football playoff to of, like seven yeah, different speaking games. Of, like punters. <laughs> I, I hey, think, it's a scramble, man. It's just all of them. Just all all I love the scramble. <laughs> I think speaking of punters, I mean, heck, the best play of the game was you know, South Carolina's punter throwing a pass to the long snapper. That was awesome. <laughs> that was unbelievable. Bowl games, baby. Yeah. I love bowl games for their trick plays. Every, I mean, it's like they all it's bring just like out. you have nothing to lose. Might as well go for it. And Notre Dame had a more realistic – Fake. I mean, I've never seen a fake punt to the long snapper before on a 40 yard touchdown pass. So that's like, I don't know if I would call that one in the regular season. But Notre Dame, I mean, they had one where they just hiked it to the up back and it was a pretty efficient play. I mean, I don't know. Maybe defensive coordinators and maybe the guys on special teams are paying attention more than I am as a fan. But I just think there's so many opportunities where you could slip a fast one by someone Mm -hmm. if you just weren't thinking about it during the regular season. Well, and the part that made it so confusing was that South Carolina was actually pretty deep into Notre Dame's territory when they chose to punt like with the fake punt. And I'm thinking, wouldn't that just raise red flags to you in the first place if you're Notre Dame, knowing that they're that deep and they're running a punt formation? It just seemed kind of weird. I mean, from yeah, Notre I thought Dame's it was the kicker at I would have said, I thought said it was a yeah, because I thought they were kicking a field goal. It was like a 40 yard field goal. And I'm thinking, why is the punt team out there? And then mm-hmm. that happened, and I was like, you know, if you're Notre Dame, how are you not in the booth? 
you know, screaming down at your coordinators on the sideline, basically tell them it's a fake. I mean, because yeah, right. no team is no team has virtually ever done that in that situation. Um, speaking of fakes, we had in the Texas Tech and Ole Miss game, the Texas Tech backup quarter or quarterback lined up on her center and then they snapped it between his legs to the other quarterback and he ran it into the end zone for a touchdown so i love it uh, also had a 44 yard points. onside kick recovery for a touchdown uh, yes. to, to oh finish off the scoring in that game i was oh rooting for the God. sec to win a lot of the games just being sec fan but i never root for but what a fall from grace for Ole miss on the season you start seven and zero, and then you lose what they lost six games on the year they were what like eight and i don't know i don't know their record but it was just a collapse they lost four of their last five i just can't i just can't see that 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 was unbelievable well you look at the auto zone liberty bowl with kansas and arkansas both of them were six and oh at one point ranked in the top 10 and they both finished six and six it's the year of collapse yeah, so Syracuse they just as well. Syracuse, yeah, just, yep. I mean, Syracuse got beat by Minnesota in the Bad Boy Mowers Bowl. I like, I like that name. Uh, you know, Oklahoma just didn't show up this year. They get beat by Florida State. What's his name? Uh, Florida State's quarterback is going to be a problem next Jordan year. Travis, yeah, Jordan Travis. Travis. Yeah. I mean, I That's know Caleb hurt. Williams is coming back, but uh, you got to and Drake May too. But you got to think he has helped his NFL draft stock and then also mm-hmm. has entered the Heisman conversation. Mm-hmm. I'm saying it right like now. For Heisman, yeah. If we were just talking about our season preview for next season, Florida State's my pick to win the ACC next year. They're going to be loaded. I'm a little worried about LSU going to yeah. Orlando. In the beginning They're a of the lot year. better than they were this year. That's going to uh, be a crucial go game for Orlando. both teams. If one Whoever wins that game is going to be set up for the rest of the season. Yeah, I let's think hope Clemson it's not is missed field, uh, missed the extra point. I think Clemson's also in trouble. I, I there's something wrong there currently, and I don't know if it's going to take them an off season to figure it out. But something's going on there that they need to figure out internally. Because I mean, they haven't looked right all season. I mean, there's a difference between them, you know, making it to the college football playoff like they have, and what they've done in the last two seasons. I get that they made it to a New Year's Six Bowl only because they barely squeaked out a couple of wins uh, against some teams that they normally would steamroll. Um, and you could say those teams have gotten better, but at the same time, you can also see that Clemson struggles to move the football. I mean, 14 points against Tennessee after Tennessee let up the freaking kitchen sink to South Carolina. I, I just don't see yeah. – I don't see the comparison there, and they just look like two – they look like a different team every time they come on the field – and uh, I don't think Cade, I don't think Cade Klobuchar is ready for that job. I, I just don't think they're ready. And if he's their guy, like Davo says he is, they uh, they got a lot to work on. They just don't have the receivers anymore. Like they have to rely on a guy yeah, called Will is. Shipley in I the see. backfield, and he can't do it all for them. Yeah, I thought Clemson was gonna. Come out and have it. Sorry, right guys, the ship under Cade, <laughs> and he he just he couldn't. I thought they were gonna have DJU transfer out, Cade Klubinak come in and absolutely just dominate, and and Clemson would be right back on their their merry way, but did not go that way at all. You know what they seem like? I tell you exactly who they look like, and it was always a team that fell short just a little bit, and I think. Uh, they had they had a good quarterback in college at the time, dominant running back, and it Stanford. You had Andrew Luck and Christian McCaffrey, and they were arguably one of the best teams in the nation, and they could never finish. That was one of the things where it was like they had the pieces in the backfield in order to win football games within the conference, but as soon as we went to big games and bowl games and championship games, they couldn't finish. It was one of those things where, and I think it's, that's what's going on with Clemson right now. And there's a lot of teams in the ACC that are going to give them a run for their money. Heck, Pickett's a big bowl win against uh, UCLA that I don't think anybody saw coming. But Duke getting a win just, over UCF. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, they blew them. Yeah, they blew the doors off of them. And there's just a lot of good teams coming up. I think Miami still has a lot of hurdles that they need to, to overcome in order to get back in contention because i mean a lot of people picked them to come back and they they never even were in the building 
They got a good recruiting class, so you and know with NIL, enough, you can turn it yeah, around. They got enough NIL money. They'll get it done. Uh, we only have uh, four more bowl games left before the championship uh, next week. We got the ReliaQuest Bowl, Mississippi State, Illinois. This feels like a Mississippi State just cap off, rest in peace, Mike Leach. They're playing in Buccaneer Stadium. He was known as the Pirate. I don't think Illinois stands a chance. Uh, we Here's got the it. issue. Here's the issue with that game. If you want to break down that game really quickly, Mississippi State has to stop the run. They, if they don't stop the run, they're in trouble. Secondly, Mississippi State has to establish the run on offense because if they don't and they end up just throwing the football with Will Rogers, he's going to throw four picks in that game because Illinois arguably has one of the top five secondaries in all of college football that's very underrated. They've got a lot of seniors back there that really know what they're doing. I mean, they forced J.J. McCarthy into multiple interceptions when they played in Ann Arbor. It They're just really difficult to play against. They're a scrappy team, and uh, they're like Iowa a little bit, and I think that they'll able to – It'll be a close game. It'll be low scoring. I just don't think Mississippi State's going to be able to establish any sort of 35, 40 point game in that. Yeah. Well, and you know, they're going to be airing the ball out just as a like tribute to Mike Leach for the air raid. I don't expect many rushing yards. We'll see. It is it, just a new coach, interim coach there. I think the under in that game. We've got LSU and Purdue. We've got Louisiana's boy, Drew Brees, serving as the inter- interim QB coach. It just feels like. I don't know, like, uh, what's the word? I'm like a backstabbing as an LSU fan. You no, love Drew Brees. Drew Brees doesn't owe this state anything. I know, but it's like it's I don't want to root game. against him. We can them, get over but, ourselves. But it, yeah, he's it, only it there cool. for recruiting. I would be more yeah. concerned if he was putting on a helmet and playing for Purdue. Yeah. Well, they they need him to because they don't have their quarterback or the yeah their quarterback's so. not even playing. Yeah, we got on the other side, Mister Kayshawn Booty, reversing his uh, comeback to LSU. He's Declaring for the draft. I figured that when they announced he wasn't going to be playing in this bowl game, something was going on. And I'm starting to think it was maybe something, uh, an issue on the team. Maybe he broke a team rule and they just didn't want to say anything. And they released the whole him focusing on his senior season, which was, in my eyes, if you're on the team, if you're coming back for your senior year, you better play in the bowl game. Sitting out of the bowl game to just not get hurt and then play the next year is stupid. If you're on the team, you should suit up and play. Um, but then he says, oh, I'm going to the NFL. So, I mean, let's be real. He never really did anything outside of his freshman year. He was great his freshman year, but our team sucked. And he started 2021 off on a good note, then got hurt. Um, he was one of those guys that was a generational talent that we never really saw come to fruition. It was like the following of Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson that just nothing happened. So I don't think we're missing much. I mean, Tyler, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's just a guy that I can't figure out what's going on really in his head. Like you mentioned, he has the talent. He had a really good freshman season. And then the second season, sophomore season, was really cut short because he got hurt Mm -hmm. uh, during that Kentucky Kentucky game. We really didn't see much of him. And then this season, he's, you know, getting all the high – he's on the preseason All-American list. You know, he's going to be the guy for LSU. And then he ends up really buried in the depth chart. Like, his first touchdown didn't come until that Tennessee game. So, what I've been hearing is that he is a, a second-day guy, either a second-round or a third-round draft pick. So, honestly, if he's that, this is definitely a wrong decision. I think if he had one more great year of tape because – I mean, there's going to be a lot of questions asked. I mean, especially with this decision making. I mean, the NFL teams are going to ask him, like, uh, why did you reverse your course? And he's going to have to, to face a lot of scouts. So, well, I'm going to be interested. We'll definitely never know what, why, and the reason. Yeah. Is it, you know, grades? Is it just something going on? Because he did, he was a recent father uh, this year. Uh, but who knows? He's going to go make his money. Uh, but I think LSU, even without him, I think they're fine. You know, I lost, I know that they lost him. They lost Jack Best to TCU, but their guy this year was Malik Neighbors. Mm-hmm. You saw uh, Mason Taylor step up at the tight end spot. You have Sheldon Sampson, a five-star recruit coming in. You have Brian Thomas coming back, Kyron Lacey. I mean, this wide receiver crew is going to be loaded. Yeah, I mean, there's I'm a good thinking. chance that um, 
number eight, Malik Neighbors comes back next year and gets drafted comparatively higher than where yeah, Kayshawn he could be a first this. first round draft pick depending on what he does this upcoming season. But I think I'm, it was the right call for for Kayshawn Booty. I mean, given the personal personal circumstances, he never really jived with <clears throat> Brian Kelly and Jaden Daniels for whatever reason. So. I'd rather him go get his money than and no LSU come back fans. Right. Jaden Daniels was not the sole reason that <laughs> Kayshawn Booty is going away. I am tired I of seeing that. A part Please of stop it, saying that. Well, I mean, it's got to be at least a part of it. Yeah, it has to along, because yeah. because I don't think Justin Jefferson. Sole reason. Well, here's no. the thing: I don't think Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase are as good as they are without Joe Burrow. That's the thing about it. it, it these guys rely on catches and touches. For their mm-hmm. numbers, if you're not getting catches and touches, then you're not going to get there. Uh, that's the part of that's the part that goes for anybody at any school, not just LSU. I, I think the problem is is that either he wasn't an option in in Jalen Daniels' mind in order, you know, uh, in order to get first downs, or he wasn't. He saw something at practice that he didn't like. I mean, think about it: is is the only way that team scores is that quarterback getting rid of the football, either handing it off or throwing it to somebody. The only problem is they might not have clicked together, and that be a reason. Uh, teams figure out and double-team them. We saw that a lot early on in the season. Uh, heck, Florida State did it in the first game of the season. They showed a lot of corner, you know, quarter one-on-one, and then the safety cheat that way. Well, of course, I wouldn't even throw it over there if that's the right. case. So uh, that's – that's what I'm thinking, you know, is the deal. I mean, they know he's option one for LSU, and Jalen Daniels just figured figured it out that I, he can't be my option one because I'm going to turn the ball over. But truly elite wide receiver ones in college separate and get open. I mean, well, that's what open. you look at someone like Jamar Justin Jefferson. And, <laughs> yeah, you had two, two wide receivers with 20 touchdowns. I mean, I think – to be honest with you, I think he was just lazy. He was a star in high school, and he was a star his freshman year because that's literally Max Johnson only threw to him. Like, that was his number one target every game. Um, and like Wade said, I think he just didn't vibe with Brian Kelly and was going to come back and maybe try to, to up his draft stock. Maybe he was thinking, oh, you know, I'll get another NIL deal from the big G down there in Baton Rouge. Maybe he didn't get another pickup from him. And he said, you know what? I'm just going to go to the NFL because now he's got a family. He's, he's got a kid he's got to provide for. I think that's um, major. I think yeah. I think that was a big key factor. Well, he's got a family now. He's got a kid, you know, and he wants to move on to bigger and better things, which I understand everybody does. And if he's okay with being a third-round draft pick, somewhere a fourth round draft pick then be my guest i mean Mm -hmm. somebody's gonna have to take a chance on him i can see somebody like seattle taking a chance on him because seattle needs all the help they can get because all they got is dk metcalf and they had a guy our third string person that even the announcers have never heard of score a touchdown today for seattle (laughs) i mean they need help and they need it bad so there's there are teams out there that will take a chance on on a guy like him yeah talent there he just needs to get in the right situation and yeah um who knows really what led to it but i'm kind of glad it's not dragging into next season and we got a good recruiting class i wish that better it's like jack bash sticking around but it's lsu they'll fill the holes and they'll be just fine and, and like with the jack bash situation you we have so many wide receivers and he just got lost in a depth chart and obviously he in my mind, he should have stayed at tight end. Um, he was a tight end matchup like nightmare out there. He had linebackers covering him, and he's got wide receiver speed. Him switching to wide receiver was probably one of the worst decisions he made. Uh, but was that his decision? I think he was the one that wanted to switch to wide receiver. Under yeah, he Coach came Allen. in as a wide receiver, and yeah, and they they put him at tight end. And I think um, he'll do just fine as a slot receiver at TCU. And yeah. I mean, there's plenty of offense to go around after yesterday. Going there. <laughs> What's yeah. that, Tyler? I could see a potential transfer happening. I wouldn't be surprised if Garrett Nussmeier makes his way over there and joins his teammate. That'd yeah, I did. Yeah. Because Duggan is leaving and then they're going to need somebody. I mean, I think you'll have another quarterback battle 
between Daniels and Nussmeyer. But if he loses, I think that yeah. he probably dips. You can call it a quarterback battle. It's probably going to be Daniels winning it. I know there's a lot of LSU fans calling for Nussmeyer to be the quarterback based on what you saw in the SEC championship. But my thing is, we saw Daniels all season, and he played the in November. He played lights out, and then he comes into the SEC championship, and he's hurt. So, yeah, he's not playing 100%. The offense just isn't clicking. You're playing the best team in the country. Uh, he gets hurt again. It's like, all right, put Nussmeyer in. And it's the same thing I've been saying for fantasy football. The same reason why Jared Stenham went off today. These te- this defense has no tape on these guys. You throw a new quarterback in that's got some talent, yeah, he's going to light you up because you don't know what to expect. So I think that the whole, oh, Nussmeyer should start the bowl game and be the quarterback going forward, based on a half – like. Half a game's experience just isn't it isn't cutting it. But well, I don't know if I see. I don't know if in college you can say that so much as you can the NFL. I get it; they're both quarterbacks. My thing is in the NFL, a lot of those guys on the field are making the play call. In college, you don't ever see that. I mean, there are quarterbacks on the field are not making the play call unless they're a veteran and they've been in the system for five years and they trust that twenty twenty two year old kid to make a call like that. That's my thing. I, I I think that LSU, I think their problems happened this year was the reverse of what their championship year was. They got to one dimensional. You cannot get one dimensional. What mm-hmm. happened is I honestly think there were play calls just for Jaden Daniel. Just, they would just clear out all the receivers and just get a running room. And if they're going to do that, then – all teams got to do is stack the box, play one-on-one defense, and if guys are going to run lazy routes, then they're going to stop them. That was the problem. I just don't think there was anybody that knew exactly what to do in order to mix it up. Um, ultimately, that falls on coaching, I think. I just I don't think they were ready for it. I, I don't know how many people Brian, uh, Brian Kelly kept from within the LSU organization there because uh, it must have not been many because – uh, it was completely different, completely changed. And I think, well, I'm uh, hoping that he doesn't keep the special teams coordinator after this season. <laughs> I think everybody can agree on that one. We're paying him a lot of money to to do it. So, yeah. Um, well, you know, we've been talking a lot about draft and NFL. We got to get to, well, I guess real quick, the last two uh, games I'm missing. We got the Cotton Bowl and the Rose Bowl. Um, we know everybody's pick for the Rose Bowl, or at least we know Fletch's pick for the Rose Bowl, and we are all full on Tulane for the Cotton Bowl. I think I'm gonna stick with Tulane. They they got more to play for over you. Yeah, Williams is playing in this bowl game too. Oh, he is. Yeah. Okay. Just I don't know how mind. like hundred percent he is because you know it's been a month. Like we haven't really got many updates, so we won't really see like how mobile he'll be while well, he's on the field. But I'm still expecting a high scoring game. Yeah, I'm changing my mind. USC. They're, they're gonna with okay. Caleb Williams playing. I'm going USC. I think the problem is the pass rush for Tulane. I mean, Tulane had had the most sacks all season in the American. I I just feel like their pass rush is so aggressive that Caleb Williams is not running out of the pocket and getting away from anybody. I mean, that, that is very evident because that that didn't happen against Utah and. Uh, Tulane's going to get after them. I mean, that, that's the thing about it. If Tulane plays, if or if, sorry, if USC plays down, they're going to get destroyed. Um, it's just one of those because I mean, Tulane can score the football. That's they have no problems on the offensive end. Uh, but if they can stop Jordan Addison from even catching the football, uh, then they got a good shot. We shall see tomorrow. I'm surprised they don't have any. Well, I guess Monday Night Football is why they don't have a. A night camp. We got the Cotton we got Bowl. a good Monday slate, both in college and in the NFL. Yeah, really yeah they want to protect Buffalo that Bengals game. game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's going to be a battle that's for the one imp- seed. It's also a big impact on a lot of fantasy football playoffs, which we're about to get to. But before yeah, we get me. to that, before we get to it, we got to get to our dog of the week. So okay. here's the intro, and I'll tell you who it's brought to you by. So who got that dog in them? Uh, last week of the college football season that we're going to be doing it, uh, we'll continue it in the NFL. And then after football season, I don't know, we'll find somebody that got the dog in them. But who got that dog to him is in them is brought to you by Piper Golf. 
to pipe your drives and have that dog in you. If you go on over to piper.golf slash sports scramble 10, get 10% off the golf balls. I've still got a pack for the three of y'all whenever we link together to play some more golf. So uh, uh, March, I'm guessing then? <laughs> yeah, probably so. That's when you'll get your <laughs> golf balls because uh, I moved further away. So, But you head on over to piper.golf uh, and use our, our promo code sports scramble 10 or use that link. You get 10% off your golf balls. So, who got that dog in them? Tyler, I'll let you kick us off. Well, of course, my pick is going to come from one of the two playoff games, and that's going to be the mailman himself, Stetson Bennett. I mean, he struggled early, not going to lie, uh, but in the second half, uh, he really poured it on uh, in an epic comeback win uh, for the dogs. Uh, 398 passing yards, three touchdowns, and Georgia is going back to the to the national championship and trying to go back to back. Okay. Fudge, you don't agree with Stetson Bennett being the dog of the week on Tyler's side. So who do you got? No, I no, I agree. I think Stetson Bennett had a fantastic game. Uh, no, I was laughing at the at the mailman thing. That's oh, <laughs> that's his name, the mailman. I no, I understand that. Um, <laughs> that was that was good. Um, I, I for me, I think it's I got to look back at the other semifinal game and think about it. Um, I'm not gonna pick. Max Duggan, I just feel that that's kind of the cop out pick. I don't want to pick that. Uh, I'm gonna take uh, the receiver from TCU, uh, Quentin Johnson. Johnson. Unbelievable, the most underrated game for receiver, him. most underrated receiver in all of, of college football. There, I mean, he uh, only had six catches, but for 163 yards, he was averaging yeah, 27.2 yards. One, 27.2 yards. Jeez. Uh, a reception and then uh, one receiving touchdown. I think he's the difference maker for them in the national championship. I, I just think that uh, if they're going to, if that's their dominant wide receiver and they go to him and Duggins can get the ball out quick to him, they're, uh, they're virtually unbeatable. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. Like a lot of people are expecting. Well, I think it's 13, like, uh, yeah. I would bet TCU plus 13 right now. I got no problem doing that. I got no <laughs> yeah. problem putting the house on TCU. Yeah. I think uh, TCU money line's like plus four thirty right now. Especially since we've public. seen that secondary get gashed the yeah. last two times they've been out on the football field. I mean, the number one defense <laughs> in college football, uh, Michigan, giving up fifty one points to TCU. I I, mean, I think we put a little sports scramble special on it and uh, take TCU plus thirteen and a half. Win us some money, maybe win us win us some podcasting money. I like it. I like it. Wait, get who's, your, money, who's your – Get enough money, we'll get a studio. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Let's all of us take and our state life state. savings and uh, put the – One first state. Gets one first state. state. Gets a, we'll gets buy some studio. land and I don't know. <laughs> or but I guess it out. you still have to travel no matter what. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wade, who do you got for Dog of the Week? All right, I'll go with Quentin Johnson's NFL comparison since Futch highlighted Johnson – and that is Mike Evans. I think there's a lot of similarity there between the two. Big time receiver, tall, lengthy, can go up and get it, but can also burn you with the legs. Um, I'm a little biased here. I love Mike Evans for fantasy purposes, and I have yeah, him in a championship him. matchup. Yeah, so it was beautiful. Can't agree with that, Wade. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hate that it happened this week because it kind of eh, the Saints don't solidify it. Yeah. They really don't. So oh, I, try again I, next I, year. But yeah, oh. Mike Evans, 217 yards receiving, three touchdowns. It was definitely a throwback game for him. I'll take it. Uh, I'm sweating out a fantasy football championship here. So um, that went a long way. So mine is still on Tampa Bay. I've got Tampa Bay's punter based on his single play he made today to save the game, Mr. Jake. Armada. He's the Tampa Bay's up. He's also uh, a former six. Georgia Bulldog. I thought I recognized his name. Yep. Tampa Bay's up six. They got to put the ball away to uh, Carolina. Carolina's got one last shot. Ball's on like the 45 yard line or something like that. I don't, I don't remember exactly where it is. Uh, bad snap. Fumbles the snap from the long snapper. He picks it up. He's got the defense chasing him down. Keep in mind, this man ran a 4-5 at the combine for his 40, okay, as a punter. That's quick. He was drafted, he was drafted in the fourth round. 
Um, he's probably going to be – he's the third string running back, if, I, if I'm if i guessing. <laughs> um, he evades the defense. He's running to the left. I thought he was just going to tuck it and run it and just, you know, be done with it. He's got a Carolina defender closing on him. He's a left-footed punter, if I remember correctly, or right-footed punter, and he punts it with his left foot all the way down the field as someone's diving to block it, and they down it at the three-yard line. I was like, oh, my gosh, that's the play of the game. And then, of course, it gets taken back because they had an illegal man downfield since he was running around like a no mad why. <laughs> um, it's like it took so long, long to develop. Like, like uh, where's the ball? Yeah, and so – then the you next play is a normal punt that they down at like the nine yard line. But you ruined Jake, your dog of the week. Hopefully, at least you get some votes in the poll. Well, if he gets if he gets tackled, the legal man downfield doesn't matter. It, the Carolina gets the ball at like yeah. they're at Tampa Bay's forty yard line. So the fact that he was able to evade it, even though it was a penalty, the penalty kind of just helped him out even more because then it got pushed back another five yards. Um, but. Shout out Jay Carmada for being the elusive Tampa Bay punter and getting so that, what I'm, that ball. So what I'm hearing is for fantasy football positions next year, we should have punter as an option so I can take a punter in the first round? Definitely. So speaking <laughs> of fantasy take football. Jay Camarda with his first pick. Yes. <laughs> we need to talk about our fantasy football league. We can Fudge, skip that. We Fudge, can skip. let we us can, down. We can, we can hey, skip come on. We you didn't, didn't have to skip scramble. whatever I lost, so you now have to be yeah. Mr. Fudge was trying to become – the first person in our fantasy football league history to win the championship with a losing record of if you won, your record would have been seven and eight, but there's a reason you have a losing record because you started Gardner Minshew over Daniel Jones, who just absolutely went crazy. If you started Daniel Jones, you probably had a good chance of winning, even though Cameron still has Joe Burrow left to play, but all hope is not dead. If Evan McPherson scores more points than Joe Burrow does, you may win the championship. You laugh. It, it worked for me last Hear week. Hear me out. Yeah, but McPherson Hear hasn't me been out, Joe as Burrow. quality as he has been. Here's the week. thing. Joe Burrow just has to not play tomorrow. Hear McPherson me out, Joe has Burrow. To, Don't has say those words, Chad. I will football. come to Texas and grab you by the throat. <laughs> Hear, hear me out, Joe Burrow. I need you to throw five picks tomorrow. No, at, you at too. I'm, against Buffalo. I'm so, driving to Mississippi, need... then I'm driving to Texas, and I'm burying both of you. <laughs> no Seawolves game for you. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is way to the championship, I, I need... and Joe Burrow's his I'm guessing you have Joe Burrow yeah. as your starting quarterback. I have Burrow, and I picked up Austin – no, Brandon oh, no. Allen off waivers today because – We I have more, more discrepancy in the comments. <laughs> Goodness. So. What happens if Joe Burrows has the flu? Then I start Brandon Allen for a fantasy football championship ah, for nine hundred dollars. What's the what's the score right now in the championship? How, how I'm much? up. I am projected to win by forty points, but it's all because of Burrow and Chase tomorrow. So you're winning right now, and you have Burrow about, and dude, Chase, or he has Chase, and you have Burrow. I have Burrow and Chase, and I'm down by ten points right now. Does and he I have, have anybody Pat Fryer and what George are you Pickens even? Playing. What are you even scared about? Because last week Justin Herbert just needed six points to win. Yeah, but it's Buffalo. Me. They've they haven't they been scored four defense, points. Her defense hasn't been as great as. So does it's your destined does, to turn on me? Does your opponent have anybody? No, he's set and done. Like it's ninety-seven okay. percent predicted that I'll win. But last week calm. I got lucky, so I'm worried it's not going to go. My as long way. as there's you know I'm no injuries fine. and stuff, you're fine. <laughs> As yeah, long as you know, the, you're talking about Joe now, Burrow, what happens and falling, game, throwing interceptions? What if the game gets canceled for some reason? <laughs> it's not I, I, I'm sure I'm what like, happens maybe, at that point? Maybe in 2020, but I don't think anything's going to affect this game. But yeah, well, so I have Brand. I'm probably the only person in the world that has Brandon Allen on their fantasy football roster. Hey, it was a good pickup. I mean, you might as well stop. I don't know if I even want to do that because I would just rely on. Jamar Chase getting me the points at that rate. I don't want to see Brandon Allen out there. Well, I thought like, it would be like a off. situation where it was like I was down by like 30 or something. Yeah. And I need, you know, and all, uh, I'll, I'll I know you're overthinking it, but I think you're fine. Yeah, yeah probably. I, think you're I want to discuss also in that league that Jacob uh, choked away the championship. He didn't choke away. It's just he Chris started Gardner Minshew. Listen. <laughs> Listen, yeah, and yeah, because Justin Herbert didn't pan out. This what year. do you want me to? Yeah, Herbert yeah, was a Daniel bust. Daniel Jones had Absolutely 40. Nothing. 
I know you can't predict it. Yeah, and Daniel like, Jones just, also had nine back. points last week. He sucked last week. Do you really think I'm I was going to start a guy you... who had nine points every week? Hey, at yeah, least you got there. Me and Chet system. were playing for the toilet. That's, that's what I was getting yes. to. I do, <laughs> get his, I do get Jacob's logic because we were both looking at the matchups. Herbert yeah, last week Saints, like, went against the Colts, and he only had like six points. So we were like, okay, the Colts are playing, you know, better defense. And then, you know, Daniel Jones goes out there and has four touchdowns, and then Minshew's playing the Saints. So I thought, like, you know, Philadelphia wants the one seed, and then nope. You know, every that's what's the beauty in the NFL. Any team can oh, beat you. Another thing, you started Garrett Wilson over DJ Moore. Yes, I did yeah, because of the bad. matchup. Because of the matchup. Think about Touch. it. Carolina oh, is playing Tampa Bay. I think he made all the right calls. It's just that Christian McCaffrey and Devontae went off at the right time. Yeah. I mean, those are the I mean, studs. And and Cameron really was a good team wire to wire. I yeah. mean, other than – Yeah, I mean, he's team. – Yeah, nine and five. He was, the, you know, the most point scorer. So this is going to be back-to-back seasons where we've seen the champion win and then also win the well, most That's how it should scored. be. Yeah. Most point scorer should win. Okay. But we have, I, we have that clause in there as a, a backup, you know, in case – And like, we didn't see the 20-point like safety. <laughs> yeah, we didn't see the 20-point safety in there either. <laughs> we well, had all that discussion. And didn't even have, Honestly, I think that the defensive players are honestly stupid and bogus, and we just get rid of them. We will have yeah, town hall we'll... on fantasy football and vote over rules. <laughs> I like the idea of upping the individual fantasy player. I think we have to. Players. I mean, it was just, like, not even yeah. there. Like, you, we have them, like, ooh, they're scoring three points a game. woo yeah. yeah, but my coworker uh, does a defensive back, a defensive lineman, and a linebacker, and they got rid of the team defense, and they bumped up the point categories and hmm. – Whatnot, and it actually seemed pretty cool. But I still like the team defense, though. We'll just have to look into it. But yeah. uh, congratulations, Jacob, for getting there. And, yeah, uh, you did better than Wade. Hey, you made it as far as we did, so we congratulate you on that. And yeah, look, and then- you know, I-, I was really surprised. I was going for broke here. Like, I think after like week six, Tyler and I had a conversation about. I was like, I don't know if I ever want to play fantasy football again. I yep, lost after that, what like row. point. I was, one loss. I beat him by yes, point oh four. Point, yes. Yeah. I mean, and it didn't end up mattering mattering in the end. Devontae like, Smith lateral. I think. Yeah, I, I just think. It's, yeah, I remember that. It's oh, funny, that was some. It's that was some crap. Yeah, it's just weird. I was like, you got to be kidding me, but I, I don't know. Um, it was a good season. I just think. Yeah, I think I just think we ditched the defensive player. It just doesn't make yeah, a whole lot I'm of one. sense. We'll add sacks. I mean, I had Micah Parsons, who was supposed team. to be like, you know, well, I was a dominant linebacker in in the NFL, and really, I think the most points I had from him all season was like seven points. And yeah. I'm like, okay, this is kind of lame. I'm getting seven points for him getting eight tackles and two sacks. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> See, that was a problem so for me. I had like Aaron Donald, who you know is the best defensive tackle, but he was only scoring like, three points. So I decided to go get Jordan Brooks, the linebacker of the Seahawks, and you know he was consistent, but the most points he scored was like nine. Yeah, and I don't even know who Jordan Brooks is. So there's a problem. Exactly. <laughs> I was learning the names of defensive players because I was trying to find. I didn't I know was, who he was, so he's on my fantasy team. I was the Texans just, middle linebacker, probably, or the Texans safety probably leads the league in tackles. I was. I think it was uh, Louis Kahn again. Just picking players that had easy matchups. I was picking the middle linebackers on those teams. It was like, well, they're going to get a lot of tackles. So, speaking of defensive players, Cam Jordan becomes the Saints sack leader. And he says, shout out Matt Ryan for making up 20% of his entire career total. I love that. <laughs> Taking shots at Matt Ryan when you can. That's yeah. good. So, um, but like we were saying earlier, Wade and I were playing since we finished the last two two spots in the league those last three weeks we've been playing for the number one pick wade has swept me so wade congratulations i'm the you best get the number of the one worst pick next year yeah so so whole chance baby Sweet. so i'm probably getting jamar chase next year i did enjoy that addition i think we definitely keep the toilet series uh mm-hmm. it's a fun way to end the season because we have eight teams six of them make the playoffs because it's a very competitive league and there's really not a big difference between number four and number six we saw right. it in like the that. playoffs then, with Jacob knocking out the number one seed. Yeah, so Take it, it down, was warranted. Yeah. But the toilet series is fun, so we got to keep it. It is. I we'll have it. to get you a little toilet trophy. I have a uh, Mardi Gras toilet that they throw. Maybe I can 
That could be the trophy. Yeah, yeah you could just you put go. a plaque on it already. It says, I need need to make sure the golden away. toilet yeah. seat. Yes, yeah, yeah, the, the golden, golden paint it gold. You okay, have I'll to wear it. Gold. You have to wear it over your neck for the next seasons. Uh, I'll put it on a Mardi Gras bead. That works. Uh, speaking of Mardi Gras, we had the Saints decide to show up and play the past couple games. They're on a three-game win streak. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore comes back, difference maker in this game, pick six to win it. Uh, but in typical Saints fashion, we're missing the playoff because we sucked for the majority of the year. And all of a sudden, the Pack- everybody thought the Packers were dead in the water, and they just destroyed the Vikings. Mm-hmm. The Vikings have had two terrible losses this year, Cowboys and Packers, and they've been by a lot of points. Yep. So, uh, can I just find? Can I? Can I just say that the Green Bay Packers are going to find a way to choke it next week for the last game of the season, even though they're playing at home. It's one of like it's like the Cowboys scenario where they're sure, not losing that lane, bro. It, it they might uh, who knows dude they're either gonna lose and choke or they're gonna win the Super Bowl like there's no in between there's no in between if or, Aaron Rodgers wins the MVP the way that defense is playing I wouldn't world, put it past them point this, yet who like who's the clear cut MVP in the NFL uh, probably probably gonna be Mahomes I think yeah. just overall yeah like maybe I, Joe, I would have said it, Hurts but now that he's out for two weeks I think that affects Hurts is hurt. If Burrow, yeah, hurts I think if, if the if the Bengals make a deep playoff, gotta be either Burrow or Mahomes at this rate. Yeah, I think if it's gonna come down to whoever beats the other one in the playoffs, Burrow or Mahomes. Yep. Burrow does it, I think he wins the MVP. Well, they the technically vote the Bengals in the regular season. Yeah, yeah, it's a regular yeah. season. It's kind of like the highest one where they already vote like before the playoffs. But you do uh, have the head-to-head game already. Burrow outdueled them. They both looked good. Mm-hmm. I think whoever gets the number one seed in the AFC. There's a good chance their quarterback wins it. I mean, think about the amount of work it took for either Allen, Mahomes, or Burrow to get their team to the number yeah. one seed. So I really, I don't think Allen wins it this year. He's been kind of lackluster for the most part. I mean, he's made good plays, but he's not like he, what everybody expected. Can we do uh, a little research real quick? I'm going to do a little research while you're talking. I'm not, all right, do a little research. A type and talk. I want to talk about how the Eagles – have the best record in the NFL, and they still haven't locked up the number one seed with the loss today. They have to beat the Giants next week. They haven't week. even locked up the division either. I know. Whoever wins next week uh, takes home. The Cowboys the only have four losses? Yeah, they only oh, have yeah. four losses. They won on Thursday night against the Titans. And then, uh, uh, let's see, who do they? I don't even know who the Eagles play uh, next, next week. week they, they play the Giants. So They play the Giants. Uh, so, and then uh, Dallas plays Washington, who is already out of the playoffs. So, I mean, if J- if Jalen Hurts doesn't come back, then they could definitely be in danger of losing that one season. And they, they lost to Minnesota earlier in the year. So, Minnesota has the head Oh, Minnesota's. Minnesota ain't going to get the one seed. Well, they have the head-to-head over uh, Philly. Yeah, they, so, there's a very good chance they get it. I think they so all they have three losses research. now. Or do they have four? They might have they four. Have four now. I think Minnesota has four now, yeah. Well – if Jalen Hurts isn't a hundred percent, if you're the Eagles coach, are you are you putting him out there? Or are you going with Gardner Minshew? I think you got to get that one seed. I mean, That's you, a big nah, you don't need the one seed. I would I mean, at least try to get one him less in game. There. You don't have to play though, and you get home field advantage. Especially yeah, when the risk. two and the seven, it's going to be another NFC East team most likely. Look, all I'm saying is, whoever I would want to be the the five at this rate, the way that the Bucks have been playing. Yeah. I don't know. Don't want to line up against Brady in the playoffs still. So I did some research. Um, we were talking MVP real quick. Um, I just looked up the last defensive player to win the NFL MVP. And the last defensive player to win it was Lawrence Taylor in 1986. Hmm. So it's been a very long time. I want to see a defensive player win it. I feel like there's a lot of good ones. I don't think anybody this year would be like what kind of numbers would you have to put up as a defensive player in order to win an MVP if JJ Watt didn't get it done in 2013 or 14 I don't see it happening he had yeah. 20 sacks and he scored three offensive touchdowns as a tight end how does he oh not win it like, the culture just changed thing. that it's just going to become a quarterback or like the highest trophy I hate it, that. that's really yeah um looking it. The Vikings play the Bears next week, so that's probably well, they should win the that if they show up and Kirk Cousins doesn't throw three interceptions again and fumbles the ball. Yeah, it's, honestly, we're looking if the Eagles lose, we're looking at the Vikings 
So what about the four? Well, the four Niners also have uh, what four losses too. Oh, it'll the yeah. Cowboys will get the number one seed because the Cowboys will hold the head to head over the Vikings over the Eagles. Or, yeah, so so it'd pretty much come down between the the Niners and the and the Cowboys in that scenario. Could you imagine right. the cow the the Niners getting the one seed with Brock Purdy leading the way? <laughs> Heck I, yeah, baby! It just I, it's setting up for one of those wacky things. It's like TCU with college football. I feel like, like the NFC is going to be more parody than the AFC. Oh, absolutely. I, I think there's only – I think it really amounts to two teams in the AFC. I just don't think that anybody has enough momentum in order to, to catch up. Well, who did the 49ers play next week? Um, I'm trying to – It's got to be like at a division. I would probably have to the Raiders? Or guess no, no, the no, no, Cardinals no. or somebody like that. The, I'm looking. Rams. Uh, I don't know. Come on, it internet. If it's LA, then I think they'll. No, the Rams play uh, Seattle. Okay, so can't who be else is left. The, the uh, they play the, they play the Cardinals. Oh, that's a win. Uh, They're gonna yeah. be starting David Blau probably. And <laughs> speaking of David win. Blau. <laughs> The NFL's had 64 different Tracer starting Troy QBs. might as well find a new hobby at this rate because his NFL QB days are it over. Ain't, yeah, it ain't throwing it on a dime. I can promise <laughs> you that. Um, well, yeah, AFC is pretty much locked up. The NFC, very different playoff picture. We'll see. AFC, I mean, you still have like the top seed still, but you still have the wild cards up for grabs. Yeah. Are, we, are y'all still going Eagles Super Bowl champs? Uh, no. I don't know. Bengals, I just don't I like the way that they're that they've been playing. Like I, I, I know that Jalen Hurts is there, but I think there's there's some issues, like especially in the defensive side. I mean, yeah, the Saints gashed them in the running game. You know, with Taysom Hill, Alvin Kamara today. I think uh, I'm going Bengals. Just Joey B. I don't know. Can I mean, we, I'm going to wait until we, after Week 18 and wait for the playoff preview to even okay. think about that. So right. I don't want to make any Niner. stupid mistakes like I did in the preseason when I said the Chargers. <laughs> it w- I think it will come from the AFC though, but I do think that San Francisco will make it very interesting. Yeah, San Fr- I would not, you know, the way that Dallas and, and San Francisco has been playing, if they give any of those teams home field advantage, uh, they're I, tough out, especially San Fran with that defense. I don't know if Purdy can go toe to toe with any of yeah. the AFC quarterbacks if it got to the Super Bowl. But if they could control the clock with McCaffrey, that team mm-hmm. is a very dangerous team. They're a tough out. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I've got some other stuff on my notes, college football-wise, but it's more like questions. I think I'll save till after the season so we have something to talk about all season. Let's talk uh, more that- about the uh, the playoff and the upcoming matchup. A little week out preview. The yeah, Georgia TCU? Okay. Yeah. Um, well – Will we, yeah, there's the the playoffs on Monday, right? Yeah, Jan- January 9th will be the the national championship. We'll, we'll probably but have a show. Usually, right we put out the show like on Tuesday. So actually yeah, we'll, we'll have we'll have the live stream uh, for Sunday. But pick, I guess we'll we'll go real quick around the room. Picks, uh, Georgia TCU. Wait, who you got? I think I'm actually gonna flip, and might go TCU. Um, I was really impressed with what I saw yesterday. I think that you can't tell me that Stetson's any better. Me for last, please. So you got the 26 year old going against the 24 year old. I think Uh, they're very similar quarterbacks. I think Duggan's a little bit more athletic, but Stetson's got the better ball. Um, but I think with the way TCU runs their offense, you don't have to be a perfect quarterback, you just got to get the ball to your playmakers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Duggan, I think, is a better scrambler than C.J. Stroud by far. C.J. Stroud came into the game with like 100 yards rushing, and they were drawing up designed runs for him yesterday. I mean, that nobody saw that coming. Uh, nobody wants to run at Georgia's defensive front. But, um, yeah, I just I like the creativity be- behind TCU's offense. And I don't know. I just – I think that Georgia – Rarely do we see teams get lucky twice in a season, yet alone a playoff. And I just think Ohio State outplayed them yesterday, and I think they kind of got lucky at the end. And, um, you know, had Ohio State been able to pick up 
you know, five or seven more yards, I think that that field goal is a lot less daunting and the guy doesn't overthink it as much. And we might be talking about a three versus four. And it's not in Atlanta anymore. It, you know, it's out west. Yeah, it's out it's in LA. LA. So I think that stadium's going to be painted purple. Because uh, I know Georgia's going to still have more. Georgia fans, fans are going to travel no matter where it is. But you got to you got to think. Look at the enrollment. We're talking, we're talking Fort Worth. These people have money. But look TCU, at the big time. The total. They have fourteen. Th- like they have, yeah. Sorry, excuse me. Like twelve thousand students at TCU. Twelve. Uh, yeah, I'm students. not talking students. I'm talking like. Just but the network, network, the alumni network, just isn't there. I mean, yeah, I do agree. Like, this is their first national championship since like the 1930s. There's going to be a lot of purple there. I think there is going to be a lot of purple. They'll I don't think it's allotment, but Georgia's going to be. I don't loud. think it's. I don't think it's going to be like super dominant. It's not going to be as like dominant home field advantage as it was in Atlanta. It's probably going to be close to a 50 50 split. Nobody has yeah. home field. It's in LA. Nobody has. No, I'm right. saying no. That's not what I'm saying. He's I was saying, saying like that no, it's not cares? going to be a home advantage as it was in Atlanta compared to what it's going to be. I can't Atlanta. tell you how many times I saw like really the stadiums weren't divided at all from what I saw in the semifinal games. I mean, I saw a lot of pictures of just random fans all over the place. I, I that I think that's what it's going to be. I mean, you're going to have little sections that are going to have you know their dedicated spots there, but. Mm. For the most part, it'll all be intermingled. I just, I don't think it's going to be one giant span over another. It'll be, it'll be a good crowd. It's just, it's a good stadium to hold it in. I just think that I, there's Regionally no, there's college football's no, not as big out there. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm thinking I want to go with TCU because that's the fun pick, picking TCU. But if history has told us anything, when everybody thinks it's going to be a close game, the SEC team usually ends up like blowing the other team out of the water uh, in years past, a lot of time with Alabama. Uh, so I'm thinking Georgia's just probably going to show up and just dominate. And everybody's going to, I mean, they haven't played in a month. Everybody's going to forget about what just happened and they're going to win by like 21. So. It's not the sexy pick, but I think Georgia. Hey, if you told me, if business. you told a Georgia fan or a player in August, all you have to do is beat TCU to win a national championship, they would have signed up for all. 13 of those matchups. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. They'd probably Fudge. be laughing at your face like, ha that's so easy. Yeah, Fudge, but who's your pick? Something about college football, man. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with TCU only because um, – if Sonny Dykes wants to see the light of day again after his comments about the SEC, they got to win this football game. That's true. Uh, yeah, I so hope the Citadel I, beats TCU in the near future. I, and why is I everyone picking on the Citadel? They're a good school. I love it, though, because i got to sit up for this one. Um, I, I think it's fantastic because TCU is the Cinderella story, and especially in college football, you just don't see it. I, I don't think you see it in football in any stretch of the imagination, you know, where a team – like TCU would make it this far. It just seems that, um, you know, a lot of talks, they're a team of destiny and, and I don't, I wouldn't call it a team of destiny. I just think that they, it's a bunch of blue collar kids that just want to go out there and hit somebody and play football. I, I just think they just think about the here and now they're level headed, probably the most level headed team I've seen. Um, because there's a lot of schools out there given the opportunity of where they're at that would just go crazy for being able to just play in those games. Mm. Um, TCU looked ready, prepared against Michigan. Oh, and yeah. they just looked absolutely – they just knew what to do in certain situations. No panic at all. Michigan starts coming back. There's just no panic, and they're just so even keeled. And it starts with Duggins. I just think that he's – like even towards the end of the game, I mean, he was – so focused on the on the here and now i just think that they're that's how they're gonna be and georgia's a strong team uh and they they'll always be i mean for years to come now i mean that's how it's gonna be until somebody else steps up i mean georgia's just another extension of what alabama was uh um, yeah of course Tyler are Hart they becoming about. the next bama i i think they are mm. i think they are the next especially bama. if they win this one we're gonna that's get the problem I, you know, Tyler and I talked about People it. People are going to be saying we won Georgia and saying we won Bama. It doesn't have Tyler, the same ring to it. Like Tyler yeah, and I, I talked about it coast to coast because I just think that 
Saban's time is coming to an end. Kirby Smart is a lot younger than him. Georgia has a lot more opportunities to get to where they they are now. Um, I I just I feel like TCU they're just ready for a game. They're not afraid of anybody. I mean that's the that's the thing about it. You got teams that go out there and play nervous or scared or conservative, and TCU does none of that. I mean they come out firing. They got nothing to lose. I mean they're they're the scrappy team that no one's picked. <laughs> yeah. Tyler, are you still rocking with the Georgia Bulldogs? I think that everybody's uh, is going to be doubting this TCU team uh, going into this game. I mean, Vegas is, like I hinted at, they're a 13-point favorite. So I think that Sonny Dykes and company are going to use that as fuel to the fire. Uh, TCU, for the first time this season, got off to a fast start. Well, I'm, I think they're going to have to do it again against Georgia. And Georgia, they got off to a slow start against Ohio State as well. Ohio State punched them in the mouth, and Georgia was able to punch right back. So – I think this is going to be a four-quarter battle. I think this is going to be more of an offensive game. I mean, shoot, we saw all of these teams score over 40 points uh, in the semifinal game. So I think that both of these offenses will take over. I'm, I'm excited to see this quarterback matchup between the two veterans of Max Duggan and Stetson Bennett. But there is going to be a split in the scramble. I'm going with the dogs. I think they go back-to-back uh, in this Top one. Got to go, <laughs> gotta go with the SEC boys in this one. I think uh, those comments that Sonny Dykes have gone on, Kirby Smart's definitely going to show that in the locker room. They're going to use that oh, as part as well. bulletin board material. The thing yep. about it is, though, it's hard for Georgia to get motivated against a team like They're going to get team. motivated because they That's, know it's that – It's the they're national beat. championship. Okay, let they're, me say they're this. Yeah, but congratulations. They're going to be motivated. You've played, you've played Tennessee. You've played – all these really good teams this year, and it's like, hey, by the way, to win the national champ, like you said, to win the national championship, you have to beat TCU. They're thinking if, yeah. TCU. I get it, but I don't think they're thinking that. If you're Georgia, you got to stay focused. Georgia, TCU I think Georgia is the other as a top team. I think Not Georgia nervous. knows that, like they play probably one of the worst game of their of the season this year, and they still got bailed out that game they're going to get a second chance so i think they're going to use that the fuel to the fire and georgia's going to come out here uh really giving a knockout punch uh, to tcu so tcu is the cinderella story we really haven't seen a cinderella story like this before in college football for quite some time but in the end georgia is just just too much i i, I think that the thing about this game is I think I'm more nervous for Georgia's offense than anything because Georgia has to be able to score the football. And if Georgia doesn't score the football, they won't win because it's clear that their defense is not going to stop anybody. Um, Because, I mean, they how do you give up 41 to Ohio State? They can I mean, it's not like Ohio State was 24. a bad offense. You can't. No, forget. I'm not. Like, I'm not saying that. But Ohio State actually, you know, they didn't play a lot of starters because a lot of yeah. guys were out. I mean, they really had the injury bug all season long. Uh, I just think that Georgia. I just don't feel that they're going to be able to score a ton of points on TCU. It just doesn't. Because if you're going to match TCU shot for shot, like I mentioned this for, before the semifinal games. If you're going to match them shot for shot in scoring the football, they're going to beat you every single time. How many I mean, points TCU does it has, take to win? It might take 50 points to I'll win say this 45. football game. I think it might take 50 points to win it. I was going to say 48. So I think it's going to be over. like a 45-38 type game. Dude, TCU is going to get out and throw the football immediately. There's no I way. I think Georgia and, has the weapons – to to really beat TCU in the secondary more than they do in the running game. Like Kenny McIntosh had a good game as well. And this is going to be a high scoring battle, but I just feel like George is going to take this game. I think that they got woken up by the way that they played against Ohio State. They weren't satisfied with that. But did Stetson Bennett really face any pressure from the D line of Ohio State for Actually, the majority did. of the game? <laughs> but yeah, but I'm um, just versus the game looking at Michigan and TCU. You can't compare the offensive lines, but Duggan really it, didn't get pressured either. Well, he did when he rolled out of the pocket. He got lit up a ton. Yeah, that's but, not gonna fly as much. Yeah, that's but, not gonna fly yeah. against Georgia. I know that they've right. been, you know, inconsistent these right. past two games, but they still have the athletes on that. I on I just was side. impressed by what Stroud was able to do. Mm-hmm. I I thought that Ohio State, if they were going to contend with Georgia, it would be because Stroud was sitting back there and airing it out to Marvin Harrison, and that's what it was early on. But when he went out with the concussion, 
I mean, they started designing up scramble plays for Stroud, run up the middle for Stroud. I mean, I think offense. if TCU can figure that out from the get-go as a weakness of Georgia's, he's got a lot more talent in that regard. And that that could really keep Georgia on their toes because yeah, – He's got more big play potential than Stroud did on the run. Yeah. So then you can equally as much roll out and dump one off to Johnson. I mean, I just think there's ways to get around that defensive front. So I'm, I'm curious to see how it plays out. Um, I, I could be dead wrong, though. I was very – big on Alabama winning the national championship last year and you know I was wrong so well we got the matchup Monday January 9th 6 30 we'll Alabama. have more in-depth coverage for you next Sunday but yeah. I did want to get it out there or today. Tuesday or Tuesday. yeah well if you're watching live on our YouTube channel you'll get our you'll get the in-depth coverage beforehand uh but Monday night January 9th 6 30 p.m in SoFi Stadium is where the TCU Horned Frogs and the Georgia Bulldogs uh, battle it out. As we end all of our shows, I have the TMZ Sports segment of the week brought to you by Fanatics. Here we go. Um, Tyler, get the code ready. We need the code for Fanatics. We got Uh, the holidays. Code is George Pickens catch the football. No, it's not. (laughs) (laughs) We've got, you know, five. A lot of talk about TCU and Georgia. If you want to roll the dice, go ahead and get your championship gear early. Go on over to Fanatics. Tyler, use what code? They are having a clearance sale up to 75, uh, 70% off, and today's code is 24SHIP. There you go. You get, get those Fiesta Bowl champ shirts. Get those Peach Bowl champ shirts. I have one from LSU. Oh, that's another point. This is the – we've reached the rotation since LSU won the championship. We're back to the – the bowl setup that it was in 2019. So yeah, kind of bittersweet. I was surprised to see the VRBO v- uh, Fiesta Bowl. I guess Tostitos lost their sponsorship there. and they would Hey, I think we're paying up. too much for that house on the bachelor trip is what I'm hearing. If they can sponsor both. I know. Come on. <laughs> cut, cut your boys a break. And, and my Cheez-Its, man, they've gone from like 325 to 425. And I see why now. They got two yeah. bowl games. <laughs> yeah. But you can do like Futch did. You can see the jerseys behind him. He copped them off Fanatics. He's got a retro Penn State from the last time they won a national championship. It's been a while. Um, yeah, 1986. <laughs> yeah, but you use code 24SHIP. I think it gets you free shipping on orders over $24. Um, and you get, of course, the clear, the end-of-the-year clearance sale 70% off. So, TMZ Sports segment. I had to search and search because there wasn't any like really good ones. What about but, um, Max or not Max Duggan? JJ McCarthy's dad touching oh his girlfriend on live TV. I didn't see that one. Uh, that yeah, wasn't well, they're gonna have to explain that one in the family for a while. All right. Um, <laughs> mine is from a Waffle House in Texas. Uh, and I say it's a sports segment because they need to find out who this cook is and get her on a hands team in the NFL. Or WWE. No, I call this video. WWE. This, a, a fight breaks out in this Waffle House. I mean, I'm talking fists are thrown. There's t- chairs, tables, or not say plates are thrown, breaking windows. The guy videoing is going, I just want my waffles, man. Just give me my waffles. I just want my waffles. Well, I don't know what was said, but the worker had enough of it. And the customer gets up on the counter and like RKO from the top rope jumps on her. (laughs) And they start throwing dukes. And this other chick, which it's like a sucker punch. I mean, it has no place in this fight. She grabs a waffle, a steel chair, chunks it across the restaurant, like two hands to this sucker. And the Waffle House worker, corner of the eye, just grabs it. One hand, snatches it out of the air. What looks a at her, looks at her, and just throws it back. At that point, I'm leaving. Fight's over. No, yeah, you, just, yeah. you caught a 20 pound That's when chair. you gave, give that worker a raise on the spot. Yeah, no, nah, fight's over. I'm out. Uh, but, yeah, sign her to an NFL hands team. I mean – that's, I guess, adrenaline. I don't know, but catching a steel chair thrown at you in the middle of a fight is pretty. Lane Kiffin's, Lane Kiffin's looking for uh, hands team players. Yeah, yeah. really. After their um, Texas Bowl, they need it. Well, that's that's all I got this this week, guys. The kickoff 2023, wrap it up college football. Uh, we got one more game next week. 
we'll be in the thick of the NFL playoffs, and then after that, we'll figure out something to talk about. I don't know. Sports scramble for a hey, reason. that's the the golf season right there. Right, golf it may be sports, college and, baseball, college basketball. Probably. We, may have, we may have to get back to asking. We we, we got to start get back playing golf. I got to get back to ask y'all how y'all are doing with your golf game. Yeah, I need uh, to definitely. I haven't that. played golf in a year. Well, Tyler, that's listen, that's unacceptable. Listen, so I was talking the other night with I was talking to my dad. We were talking about how um, when I was like really young, they used to be in like a bowling league and stuff. And I said, you know what? I said after after you know graduating and everything, I said. I just gotta get back into the bowling league on Thursday nights. Man. We'll see you uh, in the right? Some bowling. That's what right. I'm talking about. <laughs> He's I'll come to Jacob or... Live at Big Play Entertainment every Tuesday and Thursday. No, no, no. That's not even a real bowling alley. <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding. Y'all, we can start... have a bowling circuit. Folks, we'll go down there. If you're the, listening to the show, Baton Rouge, Tibet If you guys are. If you guys are listening to this show and you have gone to a bowling alley and they have pins on a string, that is not a bowling alley. No. That is an amusement park. Um, you you cannot. That, I that is not a thing. You That's need some cigarette up. I wanted to hear stained you carpets on. and grease on the balls from the PS. Yes, yes. yes. God, you got to get the bowling shirts. Around. Uh, yeah. Fudge, you if bowl. you get back into the bowling league, we're gonna have to get some coverage of this. Dude, We're gonna have I to send a sports. I think we scramble. do a traveling bowling circuit from all of our cities. <laughs> and yes, crown a champion. I I'm like it, and then we'll we'll get a little mini golf action in there. You know, just just switch it up. Um, well, I'm down for that, that. I think that pretty much wraps up the show. Stay tuned for the bowling and mini golf league. We're gonna start up. Uh, but you can catch us every Sunday night sports scramble. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please drop us a review. It helps out tremendously getting us out into the search engines and all that stuff. Spotify, you can leave a review, you know, a little rating. Do that. Share it with your friends. Share it to your grandma. We keep it PG so everybody can listen. Um, yeah. Yeah, I well, said crap instead of you know what. So, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about the illegal aliens in El Paso at the beginning. Yeah. Of the show, though, yeah, so. but to clarify, we weren't supporting the announcer. So, don't yes, that, that was a direct quote from the announcer. So, don't come after us. Yeah, don't we quote think us. He's a moron. Cite your sources, Chet. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't even remember his name uh, or who was playing, to be honest with you. NC State's announcer, I think, is who it was. Uh, college football, coast to coast. I thought they were stopping after college football season. They're not. They're going to roll on in the offseason. We're talking recruiting, transfer portal, new hires, the whole shebang, uh, Monday afternoons. And, of course, I imagine the SEC talk is coming to an end uh, once the bowl season wraps up there. Yeah, this week will be uh, the last show of the football season. Yep, and you, you know, y'all do special shows for basketball yeah, and baseball. Every so. now and then we'll be in the we'll off pop season. In. Yep. Yeah, pop in and see what's happening. So – um anything else guys before we send off our first show of 2023 all i gotta say is i think about like five cars like passed by by the by this hour and a half uh, on your window i know i <laughs> live in the corner street now yeah um so i'll have to i'll get that closed next time so it distract you. <laughs> i would just like notice it like wow oh <laughs> new year's resolutions if your resolution is to work out more Give us a heads up and quit by the end of the week so we can go back to normal gym times. <laughs> I'm fun. probably gonna, I'm going to take the week off from the gym this week, so gym I go back to a normal for a week and then it dies. Big Freddy's down. trying to get down to 180, so I'm gonna be in that gym. Got to got to fit in that tux, huh? Yeah. So, well, we appreciate everybody listening. Um, please leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts. Hit us over on YouTube with a subscribe. Leave your comments. Uh, follow us on TikTok, Twitter. Thumbs up from Fudge. I don't know uh, what he's talking about. Everywhere you can find us, we're there. So uh, feel free to pop in. And uh, yeah, I think that, that pretty much is it. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good week.